Hello everyone, welcome to Insect Pests of Crops lecture series. In this lecture, we'll discuss one of the very important recently invaded pest that is fall armyworm, Spodoptera cruciparda. So in the previous lecture, we discussed about oriental armyworm, Maithimna separata under the lecture 3B1. So in 3B2, so we'll be exclusively discussing on fall armyworm, Spodoptera cruciparda, which is very seriously infesting maize crop throughout India. Okay, so we want to know its present distribution, its life cycle, damage, and its management strategies. So before getting into the discussion on fall armyworm, we want to know what is the difference between armyworm and cutworm. So these two terms are used interchangeably many times. So we should know, is there any difference? In fact, both of them are belongs to family Nagpuridae. So cutworms are usually solitary as they grow up, but armyworms mostly gregarious. But it is not so in all the species of armyworms which we come across. Cutworms, they feed at night. Armyworms, they are usually diurnal, but partially nocturnal as well. Cutworms, the larvae are called cutworms because they cut down the young plants as they feed on stem at or below the soil surface. So they usually cut the base of the seedlings as a result of that. They earned the name cutworms. But armyworms are usually defoliators. Okay, so very rarely they also infest the red. In the event of food depletion and crowding, okay, so if there is any you now high population and scarcity of food, they will march out of the crops in search of food, which gives them the name armyworm. Okay, so more or less they are defoliators, most of these armyworms. But cutworms, usually they act as both defoliator and at the same time they cut the base of the seedlings. So that's how they can be differentiated. But many times the cutworms and the armyworms names are used interchangeably. So in fact, there are a number of armyworm species around the world. So few of the worst are very important major pests are listed here. Fall armyworm, Spodoptera cruciparda, Oriental armyworm, Maithimna separata, African armyworm, Spodoptera exempta, which is highly problematic in African countries, common armyworm or true armyworm, Maithimna unipuncta, lawn armyworm or rice farming caterpillar, Spodoptera mauritia, which we have discussed in rice, beet armyworm, Spodoptera exigua, southern armyworm, Spodoptera iridania, okay, so which is now found in Americas and considered as another very important quarantine pest other countries should now look into. So let us see the host plants of Spodoptera Pujiparda. So here in, in India, we are now mostly finding its incidence in mice and other millets. But so it has got more than 300 hosts. Okay, so probably this itself indicates the, the severity of the pest. The important crops that are infested by this insect is mice sorghum, wheat, millet, cotton, and wild grasses as well. So till 2016, you can see here, the incidence was actually restricted to Americas only. So both few of the North African you know, states and South, South American you know, countries like Brazil and other you know, places. Whereas in the year 2016, it was first time reported from Africa. Okay, till that, it's, its distribution was entirely restricted to Americas. But in the year 2018, again for the first time, it was reported from India in the year 2018. And thereafter, what you can see, within two years, it has reached most of the Southeast Asian countries, Japan, China, Philippines, Indonesia. Okay, and it has reached even Australian continent. Okay, so that means within a span of four years, it has you know, reached and spread to the very important maize growing regions of the world. Okay, that's how it becomes very problematic. So probably it might have flown from you know, America to Africa, or probably we should look into the ways and means through which it might have reached other continent and become very problematic. Okay, so there are uh, in the two or three possibilities which we need to discuss. So that's how it might have spread. So in fact, in the year 2018, it was first time reported from Shumaga only in Karnataka. And you can see it was a no national news, in fact. You can see here, 
University of Agricultural and Horticultural Science staff identify American pest first time in India because it was a very serious pest in America and Africa where it was introduced in fact and it was it is a you know, very important news because the 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 severity or the the expected the loss this insect cause may be very high. That's how it became a very important news and even International Institute of Tropical Agriculture from Africa announced that this fall armyworm has reached the Indian subcontinent. Okay, that much important this information in fact. And even it was you no know, in a very important you no know, daily the Hindu. It was a front page news. ICR sound alarm with the discovery of deadly foreign mice pest in Karnataka. Okay, so this all indicates that the the importance the pest and the 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 loss it actually caused in America and as well as Africa. And the, what are the possible routes of entry to India? So there must be two chances, either by flying, either from America to Africa, from to Africa, or from Africa to India. Or the second possibility could be carried through containers, food products, as we you know, import a lot of food products, maize, many other materials. It might have you no know, got into the any of those such things and might have you no know, got into India. Because adult can fly about 1,500 kilometers during its longevity of 10 days, and there could be a possibility. Okay, so if you look into the possibility of flying, you no know, African moth, the moth which is there in Africa to India, the chances are very meager. You can see here the distance between the Africa to India is more than 5,000 kilometers. Okay, and then look into, into the the possible flight ability of the moth. It can fly about 1,500 kilometer up to say expected is about 3,000 kilometer. So a moth in a single flight cannot reach into India. So the possibility of flying directly either from America and Africa is very less. So there must be another possibility. Okay, the chance of entry through flight from Africa is tough in fact. The other possibility could be stowaway or clandestine traveler. That means traveling without a ticket. So what happens, say for example, an adult moth might have you know, sat underneath the wings or, or anywhere, or it might have laid the eggs underneath the wings and those stages might have reached the other continent, probably India, and probably acted as an inoculum for spread. Okay, so there must be a chance on that. Or, as I was telling that we do import a lot of you know, materials, it might have you know, reached India through these containers or food products. Okay, so anything could be possible. Either of these two or three means could be possible so that you no know, the population might have reached India. One interesting fact which you should look into, if you see the invasive pests which have entered in the last 20 or 30 years, if you see coffee berry borer, spiraling white fly, coconut mite, Lemisia tabasi, biotype B, eucalyptus gall wasp, papaya millibug, South American tomato moth, western flower creeps, very important pest in US, coconut rugos, white fly, solana white fly, fall army worm, woolly white fly, which has now reported in the year 2019. If you see this, you can see this column, you can see here. So most of these invasive pests originated from America. We do not know how these American invasive pests are reaching India, but so one of the things which the authority should look into and so to avoid the possible entry of any of these invasive pests in the future. Looking at the, the nature of damage caused by this Podoptera Pujiparda, the early instars, when they, once they hatch from the eggs, they damage by scraping the maize leaves. You can see here how actually they are scraped, leading to whitish patches and later small window panes can be found on these infested leaves. You can see here the small window panes. Otherwise, you will find these whitish patches on the you know, young seedlings which are you know, infested by this fall armyworm. You can see here very clear skeletonization by the early instars. Okay, they scrape and then they fall down with the help of silicon thread, these larvae secrete, and they get you know, blown away through the wind and reach to the other plant so that you know, a single mass of egg no, can spread to hundreds of plants and become very problematic. So whereas later instars, you can see here, they confide to mostly deep pores. 
okay and feed extensively and in our world so as they open up you'll find the lot of you no know, torn up leaves like this and also accumulated excreta in the deep pool okay so extensive defoliation and accumulation of excreta in the oral are the common symptoms which you notice if you, you know just open the oral you'll find the larva inside otherwise you'll find generally the excreta accumulated in the oral so they also infest larvae also infest the tassel as well as the carp so generally we'll find two or three larva maximum per plant okay so that's how a single mass of egg which may contain about 1000 number of eggs can spread to more than 500 number of plants and become very problematic so probably if you see the recent data so it has covered most of the indian states now okay except probably jammu kashmir from where there is no report yet so most of the south indian states and many of the you now north eastern states western states have been covered okay so very short period of time within two years it has spread to most of the indian states in fact in america there are two strains of sporadic pulsi parda has been reported so i am talking about america so there are two strains one is called rice strain and another is called maize or corn strain r strain or mrc strain so in fact in america that rice strain which is there the, these are the, nothing but the populations which are you no know, most likely found on rice or on maize okay the rice strain which is found generally on rice can mix infest the rice to the extent of 53% or it may prefers the rice to the extent of 53% 0.06% on cotton 0.06% on sorghum whereas it also infest the corn to the extent of 35% whereas maize strain can infest the corn or say maize to the extent of 42% 34% of cotton okay 19% of sorghum and to very less extent of rice and as of now we do not know which strain has entered india okay so lot of molecular work has been targeted by the indian researchers and we are trying to know which strain might have entered but as of now whatever the populations which are found in india are mostly feeding on maize but we cannot know correctly prove through the molecular studies that it is entirely maize strain because we are not finding a very serious incidence on cotton and even on the sorghum and probably sorghum we are finding to at least less extent but not on rice but the populations which are occurring in india are not now finding or snow preferring the rice so as far as the, the data of last two years is considered so there is a need to know which strain is in india so we, this has got a very important information so that we can now think what precautions to be taken for management so what are the reason for establishment and spread in india within these two years so a female can lay 100 to 1500 number of eggs in a single mass it may contain more number of eggs and they can feed and survive on more than 300 hosts but as of now very few number number of host plants have been reported in india but so if there is no such host which is preferring which this insect is preferring probably it may also attack number of other hosts as yes, it is now they have been reported in us adult moth can fly more than 300 km per day it can live for about 10 days you can see it can you no know, more than 1500 km 3000 km it can fly so probably it was reported for the first time from shumaga and you can see here within a short amount of time it was reported probably one of the best reason to say that the ability of the moths might have you know, helped the you now insect to spread native parasite activity is very low of course so whatever the parasite which infects other nematodes are not parasitizing to higher extent leading to high population crop availability both during karif and rabi so one of the other crop will be there or the maize will be available throughout the year so few farmers will be growing so food will be available as a result no it acts as a congenial condition for the no insect to multiply so coming to biology of spodoptera proji parda so these are the different stages so in adult female can lay 835 to 1169 as per the you now biology papers which have been published from india it can live for about 8 to 11 days and x it are usually lays the x on the under surface of leaves or the upper surface of leaves and egg period is about 2 to 3 days x are generally covered with you now hairs which are usually found in the you now last abdominal segment which acts as a protective covering for the you now x by the egg parasites so it undergoes six larval instars with a 
duration of 14 to 19 days. This is the feeding stage. And you now as yes, the larva grow, grows, so they remain in the deep oral and you now feed acts as the foliator. And pupation generally occurs in five. Okay, very rarely also in orals or in the top, which takes about 19, 9 to 12 days. Okay, so total life cycle from egg to adult may takes about 37 to 40 days. So these are the different larval stages. You can see the well-grown larva it can be easily identified with the help of few of the identification characters like you can see a pale dorsal line in the dorsal region and there is a there are two pale lateral dorsal line you can see here okay and in each of those abdominal segments you will find four smaller dorsal spots which are arranged in trapezoidal manner you can see here whereas on the eighth segment okay you will find four larger spots you can see here which are arranged in square manner if you see the difference between these and these they are found in the trapezoidal manner whereas these you now Spots which are found on the eighth segment are arranged in square manner. So thereby we can identify this species called fall armyworm. And also there will be inverted Y line in the head region. Okay, so thereby we can distinguish the fall armyworm, Spodopera pojitarda. And the pupation occurs in soil, it usually covers the you know, pupa with the earthworm layer, which gives the protection against parasitoids again. So and even the pupa, you can distinguish the sex. So, in case of female, you can see the distance between the female genitalia and the anal slot okay, is much larger compared to the male, where the distance between the male genitalia and the anal slot is very small. Okay, so there we can distinguish these two known sexes. So, even at the end of the pupa, there will be trimester to arm like structures. Even in the adult, it can be distinguished with the help of you know, number of characters. So, they are usually sexually dimorphic. So, male and female looks very different. So important characters in order to distinguish male are, so the four wings are light brown, whereas number of spots will be there. One is called orbital spot, you can see here, which is light colored, oval or oblique, this is the one. The another spot is called reniform spot, which is indistinct, not so clear, but if you see from the lateral side, sideways, it is V-shaped. Okay, you can see here. And there will be, at the epithel region, there will be a white patch, you can see here. Okay, so thereby you can distinguish the Podopra Fujiparra, whereas the the end wings of both male and female, you can see here they are cream colored. In case of female, you can see here, so not much parts are found. So usually they are more or less uniformly grayish brown in color. Okay, but there are a number of parts which present in case of males. So there you can distinguish males and females of fall army worm. In order to understand the incidence level or in order to know the management strategies to be targeted, we need to understand the growth stages of mice. Okay, so once you for the crop, so it germinate, it reaches to say 10 to 14 days after germination, there will be you know, one or two leaves which are very clear, well grown, which is called, you can see here, vegetative stage is called VE, the seven day old crop is called V2, 14 day old crop is called V5, which is nothing but the vegetative stage fifth. Okay, so V8 stage, it reaches at now 21 days, like that V12, V17, casual stage. V12, it's called you no know, 28 day old. So uh, sorry, no, which is about it takes about 45 days. And reproductive stages are called R1 to R5, casual and silk stage and casual and calf stage. Okay, so what happens if you look at the the incidence level as far as the India is considered so far? The incidence is actually mostly restricted up to 45 days. Okay, so thereafter the incidence actually goes down. So goes down, you can say that it is very negligible after 45 days. So this information to be considered while you know, taking any management strategies. So we need to know the, the level of damage in your field. Okay, so then only once you identify the level of damage, which we call it as economic threshold level, it is possible to take up management strategies. So which is which can be you know, identified with the help of scouting. So there are two ways of scouting which have been identified. One is called W manner. Okay, so what needs to be done is that we need to walk for about five meter like this, five meter like this, five meter like this, like this. So now it takes the shape of W. Once you complete this you now movement, you need to count total number of plants you can throw and count how many are infested and calculate the percent infestation, which is very much important. Say for example, fifty percent, thirty percent, twenty percent like that. Or you can go to another model called ladder manner. Wherein you need to walk like this. Okay, take 
turn and then we have another five meter like that. So five or six runs are required in order to complete a ladder shape. And again, you count the total number of plants and how many were infested and calculate the percentage exposure. So based on that, once you come out with it, the that statistics, once you know that this is the level of infestation, what needs to be done? You can see I repeat the crop is germination to 10 to 14 days to 21 day crop. If the incidence is 20%, you need to go for spray. Okay, you need to take up management strategies. But at the world stage, that is at V5 to V12 stage, if the incidence is up to 40%, you need not to worry. If it crosses 40%, you need to go for spray. Okay, management strategies should be initiated. But at tassel and silk stage, if the incidence is 20%, even up to 20%, there is no necessity of spray. Okay, looking into this data, economic threshold level, you need to go for management strategies. So what are the management strategies then? So in order to now, reduce the population to very low level. You need to employ integrated pest management strategies. If you employ any one strategy, okay, it is not possible to reduce the infestation. That's why integrated pest management strategy need to, uh, need to be adopted for management of this very severe, so major pest of mice. So, we we'll start with the cultural control strategies. Flowing of all fallow land exposes pupae to desiccation. So, what happens? The people which are there in the soil get exposed. To high temperature, they may die or they may access food for avian predators, and as a result, population will get reduced. And another very important strategy is synchronization of synchronization of sowing date with the farmers. So all the farmers of that particular area, mandal level, taluk level, or district, so all the farmers should go for you now sowing at the same time. The same time means within a span of two to three days, not doing a you know, gap of about 10 to 15 days or 20 days like that. Staggered, it's called staggered sowing. If you do like that, Whatever the population are there, okay, we spread to all the area and you know, very less infestation occurs. But if the staggered sowing occurs, the population so in the particular area complete the life cycle and then, then they move to a newer area and the incidence become very serious. So that's why synchronization of sowing is very important. Another very important strategy is that collection and destruction of egg masses. As I was saying that eggs are found generally on the under surface of leaves or the upper surface of leaves and they are found in masses. So if you move out, okay, you'll generally find, okay, eggs, and it needs to be scratched, needs to be pressed, so that in a single press, you may kill about, you know, 1,000 eggs, so that we can minimize the population. Very important strategy, in fact. Coming to mechanical strategies, so setting thermo traps, four per acre, so you can increase the height of the, you know, trap to canopy level as the crop grows, so that attracts the male moths. Okay, so this is, Female producer sex hormone has been exploited for the you now management of Kodakra Pujiparda. Coming to biological control strategies, so spraying metarhizium delay. Why this metarhizium delay, which is considered as entomopathogenic fungus, is working very well, especially in the Karif season in India. Once the humidity is good, then in the cloudy weather, that congenial condition is actually responsible for you know, proliferation of pores and becoming very you now severe for the fall armyworm. And as a result, the incidence of this fungus is actually reducing the population of Kodakra Pujiparda. Okay, so in order to augment further incidence of this metabolism, you need to go for spray. Okay, otherwise, natural incidence of this no entomopathogen fungus itself is more than 50% in many parts of Karnataka. Okay, so because in the Karif season, we will encounter that you now cloudy weather and higher humidity, which help for the proliferation of metabolism, reducing the population of Palarmi. Okay, so in dry season, usually I you know incidence of this metabolism relay is responsible for our know, reduced population of Palarmia. So, one more important biological control strategy is our use of trichogramma parasitides, which can be released at the rate of 50,000 twice at 15 days interval when the crop is 15 to 30 days. So, twice it needs to be released. So, the parasitides the X. Or else, so if you minimize the incident, you know, insecticidal spray, you can conserve the Another very important parasitide, which is working very well naturally, is the Theronomus hemorrhage, which belongs to family created yesterday, which is working very well. It is reducing the population. Okay, so these two egg parasitides can be exploited for the management of fall armyworm. Coming to chemical control strategies, so one important strategy which the Indian government uh, approved is the seed treatment with cyanotronic and thiomethoxone at the rate of 6 ml per liter of water. Okay, so 
That means your seeds have to be coated with this insecticide and then you can go for spray, you know, sowing and it takes care of the population, okay, to up to 20 days. Take care of the you know, crop up to 20 days. As a result, you can minimize the, the spray operation. Okay, so seed treatment. Otherwise, looking into the, the economic threshold level, we can go for spray operations. So we can use Azad Direct 1500 ppm mercury rate of 2 ml per liter of water or any other you know, synthetic insecticide like Lambda Cello 3 plus Thiomethoxam combination product, 0.5 ml per liter of water, Chlorantronaliprol at the rate of 0.4 ml per liter, Spinitorum at the rate of 0.5 ml per liter of water, Amamectin benzoate at the rate of 0.4 grams per liter of water. So only thing is that, so whatever the insecticide, whatever may be the insecticide which you use, the spray should be directed towards the oral region of the maize plant. So that, as I was saying that larvae usually found hide in the deep pools, the insecticide reaches and kills the insect larvae. So that's why the farmer, whenever he is spraying, you need to target that you no know, spray nozzle towards the, the oral region so that he can effectively reduce the, kill the larvae. So another very important point to be remembered is that if the farmers follow IPM strategy, the two on community basis, that means all the you no know, all of the farmers of that particular area, say mandal level or palak level or the district level, all the farmers have to take up on a community basis, whatever the management strategies they are adopting in that region. If all of them do you know, at the same time, so definitely this palar can be minimized. Or if the you know, single farmer does it, if the neighboring farmer is not doing it, so definitely insect has to move from field to field and causes enormous loss. So this point should be remembered and taken care of. So before ending my lecture, I have a few, few questions. Why this insect earned the name fall armivorum? So, so many times I use the word fall armivorum, fall armivorum. So what it means? Why it has earned the name? What is the impact of fall armivorum on regional and international trade? Whether it has really affected the you know, export or impact, no import. What are the native potential biocontrol agents of fall armivorum for its management? Because they introduce species. So in India, we do not have much you no know, parasitoids. Okay, which is you no know, parasitizing. So probably so some of the native parasitoids or predators can be exploited for better management of this insect. So what are the you no know, potential agents which can be exploited? So there are a lot of you no know, publications already. So some of the publications which I am you no know, giving link below this you no know, presentation. So kindly go through that. And if you have any questions, oh, you can ask me or you can email me as well. So thank you. Thank you very much.